In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you what it's like to have a torn ACL and meniscus, or menisci, because both of mine are pretty jacked up. I got the clearance from my doctor, Dr. Brian Gay. He's a radiologist, a first look MRI. I'm gonna link all of his uh, details down in the comments section and down in the description down below. So go ahead, let's just watch this video, check it out, it's about five, six minutes or so. You're gonna see everything about my knee, and then stay tuned at the end of the video, because then I'm gonna show you what I'm actually capable of and why I'm getting surgery in a couple of days. Hello, Frank. This is Dr. Gay. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you so much for coming in. And I'd like to show you what is happening in your knee. And it is not your imagination. You have a few findings here that you need to take these images to um, your orthopedic surgeon and get some advice as to how to get this fixed. But I'm going to start off by showing you the anatomy and then the few things that um, you need to get some help with. So here we go. This is a view we're slicing in short axis. This is your kneecap in the front. This is the femur in the back here. These are the calf muscles up high. And this is another view. This is looking straight at you. This is the femur, the big thigh bone. And down below we have the tibia. And we have this rounded area. This is the medial femoral condyle. This is the inner side, so your knees would touch over on this side. This is the outer side over here. And then we have this little area right here in the middle. This is called the intercondylar notch between these two condyles. Down below we have the tibia. And on this view, we can see the menisci. This is the medial meniscus over here, this little black triangle. It fits between these bones, the femur and tibia, kind of acts as a shock absorber, and it broadens the articular surfaces here, giving the knee some stability. And this is the lateral meniscus over here. It should be a perfect black triangle. The ACL is going to be here. The PCL is going to be here. The ACL is the main ligament that we worry about, the anterior cruciate ligament. And we'll see that better on some other images. But on this view, we're going to look at the kneecap. Here's where I always start with the kneecap. And we see the black line is the bone, the cortex. The gray area beneath that is the articular cartilage. So the cartilage is nice and thick, looking normal on the uh, kneecap. Behind that, we have the white. That's the fluid. You have a little bit of fluid in the joint, which is not normal. So this alerts us that something is wrong. We have some white fluid here. Again, the patellar car cartilage looks normal. Now, if we roll up above the patella and come down, we're going to be looking at the femoral side. This is the femur. The kneecap glides along on the femur, and here we see this gray band. This is the articular cartilage of the femur, and I put an arrow right there. We have a little nick. This is a tiny little fissure or erosion of that cartilage of the femur. That can cause some pain. As we go down here, I put another mark here. This is um, a little band of low signal surrounded by fluids. This is a little free-floating, loose piece of material, probably a little meniscus fragment right there. So this is something that you need to talk to the orthopedic surgeon about. Sometimes they'll go in there and remove these things, and um, they can talk to you about that. But now we're going to go to the other views where we really see things better. So this is a sagittal view looking in profile. This is the kneecap. The quadriceps tendon comes down here to the top of the kneecap. The patellar tendon comes off the bottom of the kneecap to the tibia. So in this side view, we see you in profile. This is your femur, tibia. This is the back of the knee, big, huge calf muscle here. And then here's the front of the knee. This is the kneecap again. This yellow line is where we're looking on this view. So if we go to the right, whoops. If we go to the right or left, it shows where we are in this image. If you're wondering what the yellow line is. Now on this view, this is the main view. We're looking for the anterior cruciate ligament. The ACL comes off the back of the femur here. It starts about right here, and it comes down obliquely to the tibia. And your ACL is right here, so it should go up at this angle and attach up here, but instead it's horizontal, it's dropped down, and if you follow it, it would go over here instead of up here. So the ACL is torn from the femur and dropped down. And Here's the ACL right here. Here's the back of it. Again, this should attach up here. So you have probably a long-standing chronic tear of that anterior cruciate ligament. And when it's acutely torn, we usually see marrow edema. I don't see any bone bruises or marrow edema, so it looks like an old tear of the ACL. When the ACL tears also, we get the PCL, the posterior cruciate ligament, that goes the other way. It looks like a candy cane. We call it buckling of the PCL. Instead of being straight, it looks more buckled. So we call this ACL tear with buckling of the PCL. And also, the tibia, this is the tibia, is shifted a little bit too far forward. The ACL keeps the tibia from going forward relative to the femur. And if I drop a line from the femur down, there's a little gap here. So I know there's anterior tibial translation, we call that. So an ACL 
torn, buckling of the PCL, and shift of the tibia forward, meaning the ACL is not doing its job. And so that is the main finding, and that's something you need to talk to the orthopedic surgeon. I've had one of these myself with the same left knee, and they usually take out um, a piece of tendon. Now it's the quadriceps tendon. They used to do patellar tendon, but they um, will put a uh, the ACL graft in here, and um, pe people usually go back to 100% of their previous activity after time. Now you do have a couple other findings. You have tears of your menisci. So remember the menisci are these little black triangles that go between the femur and tibia. Here's the front of your lateral meniscus. Here's the back. There should be beautiful, perfect triangles, but instead this looks more rounded. So the inner margin is torn and truncated. Here's the view on this side. Let me zoom this on up. This is your lateral meniscus. Looks pretty triangular here, but there's a little band of brightness in it, which is not normal. And on this view, you can see there's a horizontal band that comes down. Looks like it touches the bottom. So this is a tear of the lateral meniscus body. If we go to the back, this is the, uh, I'm sorry, the front. This is the anterior horn. It is also not quite normal. Again, it had that truncation of the inner margin. So you have a tear of your anterior horn as well as the body. And also, there's a little band right there. This is a small meniscus fragment that's displaced into the joint. So a complex tear of your lateral meniscus that involves the anterior horn, meniscus body, and also the posterior horn has a little tear as well, truncation of the inner margin here. And now we're going to go to the opposite side. We're going to jump through the midline and go to the medial side. So the medial side also has a tear. This is the posterior horn, the back. This is the anterior horn. And they should look like perfect triangles, but we see the anterior horn the top of the triangle has a little hole in it. It looks like a scooped out tear. So this is a tear of the anterior horn of the medial meniscus and the posterior horn here as well. It looks unusual. There's a irregular tear going from the top to bottom. Again, there should be a perfect little black wedge triangle. So a complex tear of your medial meniscus as well. And the tear goes all the way throughout the anterior horn, body, and posterior horn. And these can be associated with the ACL tears. When the ACL tears, and there's abnormal stress on the menisci, and the menisci can go on to tear. So definitely need to get with the orthopedic surgeon and um, see what they say. Typically, they'll try to go in there and repair that ACL using your own tissues, and they'll um, smooth out these menisci. They'll go trim them down and remove any meniscus fragments out there. And again, let's find that meniscus fragment. Over here, I put a, a, um, a marker here. This little black line is a displaced little fragment from a meniscus, and I found it in this view. There it is on this view. Here it is on this view. So they'll have to go in there and remove that. Sometimes when they're small, they don't even remove them. They'll uh, go away on their own. So that's it. So in the end, you have a tear of your ACL and tear of your medial meniscus and lateral meniscus, and no significant arthritis, which is fantastic. Your joints look very good, no significant erosion or spurring. And that's it. So thank you so much for coming in and let us know if you need anything. So that's exactly what it's like having a torn ACL and a meniscus. So I do have the menisci, both of them are uh, torn. I'm not the smartest person in the world to talk about. So obviously everything you just watched in a video clearly describes what's going on. Using that information, right? I made this decision myself. Uh, I first tore my knee back in 2017, inline skating. It wasn't this clip here, but something similar to that, just jumping down seven flights or some flights of stairs, landing wrong, my knee went in and cracked. My stupid self decided to put on a knee sleeve and get on the skateboard and decided to skateboard for another couple hours. Got really swollen. That was incident number one. Fast forward four years, 2021 wakeboarding in Germany, don't have the clip because uh, I was trying to make a cool video jumping off a ramp and same thing happened. Me and the board went one way, knee went the other way. I fell in through the water, my knee popped again. Had to rehab it again. And so 2022, I tried to do sprints and stretching too much too soon, retweaked it, started doing this ATG split squat, this exact move on my toe, boom knee popped again. Oh my God. All 2023 felt really good. We're here in 2024. I'm getting surgery in two days, Friday, and I'm going to be documenting my journey and all about it. But this is a decision I made because I want to be 110%. Um, Arlo, Arlo, come here. Arlo, 
Well, anyway, my dog Arlo is over there going towards the door, but I want to be able to run with my dog Arlo. Um, you know, I want to be able to, you know, I can still single leg squat. My legs are a little sore, so you can't really see it that well, but that's the good one. This is the injured one. I can still come all the way down. Obviously legs are sore. I can't go back up, but you can hear it. Let's see. all those noises, the clicking and the popping. So it's just grinding. He's gonna go in there and clean that up. I have full functionality. Like, you know, I can sit here, go all the way back. Now I haven't warmed up or done anything, but you know, I can go pretty far. I can do a lot. Um, you can even see this clip here. I'm snowboarding in Austria. Snowboarding's never felt any better. Now, uh, the year prior I was in Whistler and it was a little tender and my knee was a little tweaked. So I've been doing a lot of single leg uh, balance exercises, a lot of single leg cable lateral kicks, you know, having a cable attached to my ankle and kicking. So my knees felt pretty good. Um, the main thing is when I'm running for a couple of miles afterwards, the inside of my knee aches a little bit. And as you can see on the MRI, I did have uh, an orthopedic doctor, a surgeon look at everything. And we just came to the decision together, even after talking with my Cairo, that I might as well go ahead and tackle this now. I'm 39 turning 40 this year in August and I'm not getting any younger, so better to do this now while I'm young and I can rehab quickly. If I was just gonna walk and not do anything and be a maybe normal person, I wouldn't need to do this because I can do a lot of stuff and still, you know, like I said, hang on, put the weight on this leg, mash it, drop. Oh, let's see, I'm moving all over the place, getting into this pigeon, dropping down, negative eccentrics. Like I can do a lot with it. It has very good functionality, but it's not where I wanted to be and there's always like maybe 5% where like, oh man, if I, if I did that a little further, like something could go very wrong and I just don't want to live with that in the back of my head. So that's why I'm getting the surgery and that's just kind of what it's like. So for me, I did all the rehab myself. I'm really big on deep tissue massage, e-stem, acupuncture, chiropractic, any kind of Eastern medicine. I have a lady who's a uh, uh, Korean and she mentioned in uh, kind of like a little broken English, she was like Western medicine cut. Eastern medicine treat. And that's honestly how I feel a lot about it, stuff that here in the States, United States of America, which we have, I think we have a great treatment center. The, you know, the fact like my dad's in the hospital right now, whole another side story, don't need to talk about it, but they're great at treating and getting someone taken care of. The unfortunate thing is like the hamster wheel of death. Once you're in the hospital, sometimes you never get out. And that's why I don't want to just do surgery immediately. So I spent, uh, what, 2017, three, yeah, at least the past six or seven years dealing with this. I feel like time now, it's time now to finally take this, get this thing taken care of. And so, yeah, that's what it's like. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, stay tuned because you're gonna see a lot of uh, YouTube shorts, one minute clips where I'm gonna be documenting this ACL meniscus rehab process. I'm gonna be showing you what it's like walking with crutches, my very first day out of surgery, and hopefully get me back to snowboarding in 2024 because we're supposed to go back to Austria and Germany, do some snowboarding in Austria again, and then also in February 25. That is the dream. That's the goal. God help me, please. So anywho, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already because if you're brand new, again, my name is Frank. I'm a certified personal trainer, a fitness nutrition coach, and on this channel, I'm gonna help you feel, move, and look better through mobility, training, and nutrition. Please share this video with a friend or family member that maybe is contemplating having knee surgery. Um, it kind of depends on the severity of where you're at. I would talk with your doctor and primary care physician first. Do all sorts of prehab, all sorts of stability exercises, get that knee feeling as good as possible so that way if you do go into surgery, you can come out because I know I've already had this, uh, this brace and crutches and I'm gonna be doing a lot of one leg hopping for a few days and so you just wanna be prepared that if you are gonna get surgery, you need to be as strong as possible so when you come out of surgery that your body can handle anything and everything that may um, be coming your way as far as terms of adversity from, you know, just being able to use one foot. Have you ever tried getting out of the shower on one leg? Have you ever tried putting on your socks or anything? Imagine having a cast or a brace on one leg and you're not allowed to bend it. It's pretty crazy to think that something can happen in a moment's notice, even though I've been dealing with this for a long time. I know sometimes people fall and they hurt themselves and you could be put in an uncomfortable situation real fast and quick. So that's why I'm really big on taking care of your body, not only to look good and you know feel better, but also to 
move well, be able to squat. You know, I pray to God I could snowboard when I'm 90. So don't want to carry on too much longer. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you and I can't wait to see you checking out the next video. I keep on working, got purpose and worth. Music's my cure in this world is my purse. Get rid of this curse with every reverse. Of course I've been hurt, but some not been much worse. Leave me alone, get out of my head. Walk out the opinions until I am dead. They all go to speak, but you listen instead. Listen some more and you'll cease to regret. I keep on working, I got it on track. You're gonna see my name up on the flag. I sell this shit and I'll never come back. I keep this bitch on the line to attack. Never look back. I make a record like crash. Top of my bracket, I smash. I'm like a pack. I'm about to stack it like cash. It's gonna happen so fast. It never changed my